Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Whatever you desire to do. Whatever you desire to do in this house today. I've been... Thank you, Lord. Help us, Lord. I just couldn't couldn't get the the next sermon in my sermon series together this week. It just wouldn't come like it should. And I, I know how the Lord talks to me. I know how I hear him. And that means he wants me to do something else when he won't give me what I need. You need to figure out how he talks to you, but I know that when he wants me to do something, he makes it all available to me. When I don't have the words, he gives them to me, and, and he wouldn't release me to preach the next sermon in the, oh, how wondrous is the name of the Lord series, but he did give me a word that I need to give you today. He, he did, he, he, he worked with me on this word for a long time. And I don't know that I'm really in position to do it justice today, but I'm gonna do my best to try to give you what he gave me. He let me have an experience that is symbolic of how he deals with us. And I wanna to try to share that with you today. And, and I can tell you this now, if you haven't known this, that any preacher that preaches is preaching to himself as much as he's preaching preaching to you. And so the authenticity of a message means that it has to first ring true for the, for the person preaching. And so today, I wanna to tell you, there's a, there's a word, it comes from Psalms 86. Psalms 86. And I want to read that for you in your hearing. I'm only going to read the first four verses. It says, Hear, O Lord, and answer me, for I am poor and needy. Guard my life, for I am devoted to you. You are my God. Save your servant who trusts in you. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I call on you I call to you all day long, bring joy to your servant, for to you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. It's a psalm of, of David. I've just been getting a whole lot of information about troubles lately. One thing we, preachers become a repository for the issues of life for a lot of people. You don't, you hear it, but, but I hear a lot of it. Not just the day-to-day -day stuff that we see on the news. I see that too. I seem to have been drawn into the situation that happened in Virginia from so many different perspectives from the perspective of the reporters who were doing their job, from the perspective of a young man who was aching, aching, aching and needed some help, some attention, from so many different perspectives, from the perspective of his family that had to be shocked that their loved one could have reached that point and them not know about it from the perspective of a father who now has recorded for posterity his daughter being shot to death on TV. From that perspective, not only that, but the perspective of a family who saw their son being murdered on TV. And from the perspective of the joy that came with his dying act, he, can't, he, he photographed the person who shot him. From the perspective of coworkers, 
who are now afraid to go out to any remote spot for fear that somebody's going to come and do something to them. And not just them, I mean, I'm just, that's just a ready instance. But I also know that people in this congregation are hurting. They got situations going on. I've got too many calls this year about somebody who said the test was positive. The doctor said I got cancer. In this congregation, you might not get these phone calls, but I get these phone calls. And, 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 and I want folks to know that I'm in prayer for you. I'm in prayer for you, and I'm not, I'm not saying that dismissively. People say that dismissively sometimes. People come and they share their problems with you, and you say, you look at them, and you say, well, I'm going to pray for you, and you don't. You don't pray for them. If you do, you don't pray sincerely. It's just something you say to move people along in a conversation. It's become too colloquial now, but prayer is a serious thing. Prayer is the most powerful weapon we can use to aid somebody because we don't have enough resources to help people. We don't. We don't have enough resources to help people. We don't have enough resources to give people enough money or enough physical stuff, but we can pray for them. And when we pray, we invoke all of the resources of heaven, and we move that to a focal point in that person's life. You need to know about the power of prayer. But do you know, do you know that not enough people utilize prayer? Too many people try to go about it themselves. Lord, let me have an experience recently that focused in on how he helps us. And it, it just happens to dovetail, I believe, with this scripture. How many of you have ever bought something and had to put it together and it came with some instructions? And the instructions didn't seem like they made sense. And it says, if you have any problems, call this number. Yeah. Anybody ever had that experience? A whole lot of parents have that experience on December 24th. <laughs> whole lot of us. Yeah. The number they give you is to what's called the help desk. The help desk also is the name given to folks who use computers and you run into problems on your computers. You get to a point when you're computing that your computer won't do what it, it's told to do. Or it just stops. And so then you have to call somebody like Karen, who is the help desk for the county courts. So you got to call somebody like Greg Splun, who's the help desk at, over at Alabama Power. You got to call somebody who knows more about the computer systems than you do. You got to call the help desk, and the help desk can help you when you can't help yourself. People think that life is going to be a bed of roses most of the time. I, it's not. And I, and I don't say that to wish any negative on anybody. I can simply tell you that life is hard. Life is hard, and it's not hard because you make it hard. It's simply hard because we are born dying. We are. We are. But in between the time that we're born and the time that we leave here, we make relationships with people, and we are interwoven into folks' lives. And, and when that separation comes, it is a painful painful separation and how to deal with that and so I know for a fact that I got people here who are not sitting here talking about grief in theory they're in active grief they're struggling life is very difficult I know that we got people sitting in this congregation right now you didn't know anybody in the Dominican Republic but somebody else knew someone in the Dominican Republic and they're struggling right now because they don't know what is going on there they got friends that have been been hurt in the Dominican Republic when, when you hear about a storm hitting the Caribbean it doesn't mean anything to you but if you got family that lives in the Caribbean then it means 
something to you and, 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 and you can't do anything about it. So what we do and what we need to learn how to do is call the help desk. All right. All right. We need to call, learn how to call, call the help desk. When you buy a computer, I bet if I ask, if just about everybody has a computer or has access to a computer. <clears throat> Recently, I had a problem getting my emails. That's a problem, because I communicate by emails a lot. And I need for my computer system to work <laughs> so I can be an effective communicator with a lot of people. It cuts down on a lot of work. But it wasn't the email because I was getting emails on my phone. And see, if you don't know it, the same emails you get on your phone are the emails you get on your main computer, but my emails on my main computer wouldn't come through. Now that might not be problematic, except that I got too many accessories hooked up to my main computer. So I can print from my main computer, I can do all these things. And so not getting my emails created an issue for me. And I sat there, I've been, I've been computing for a long time. I mean, I've been using computers since, since at least the 80s. Since at least the 80s when there were big old floppy disks. <laughs> oh yeah, I had computers. I mean, I, I did, I, was, I, learn, I knew how to do it from the 80s. Big old floppy disks, you know, and I've gone from big floppy disks to no disk, to no disks, I mean, at all. But I mean, I knew, how to do it, and I've always somehow had a computer. So when I sat down to correct the situation, I hope you hear me and follow me on this, because this is, I believe this is going to help somebody. But when, when I sat down, I did everything I knew to do on the computer. And that, I can get around on the computer pretty good, because, you know, I do the stuff that we do around here on the computer. But everything I knew to do didn't work. I even got enough sense now to know I don't have to call. I, I can go on Google and say, I got this problem. Tell me how to fix this problem. And other people who've had that problems will detail how you go through it. I even went through that, Reg, and detail. I went through it, and guess what? Still didn't work. Which means that even when you know what to do, there's still another level of knowledge you don't know. Because in the end, I'm a lawyer. I'm not a computer person. I don't know computer language. I don't. And there are some things that you have to, you have to know. So I, I went to the main site. Fortunately, my internet was still up. So I went to the main site for my internet carrier, which happens to be AT&T. And in the bottom of the in the bottom of the screen, it says, if you need help, <laughs> open a chat line. Open a chat line. I had seen that. Can I, can I tell you something else? My email had been coming through for about two months, and every now and then, I would get an error message. And I would ignore it. I would ignore the error message. All right, it would say something, and I'm thinking, this is spam. So I would ignore it. And it would say to me, look, do you want to repair? That's what the, it, do you want to repair? And so uh, one time I hit yes, and then it wanted my, my password and username and all that, and I couldn't remember it, so I just ignored it. Because <laughs> everything wanted a password and username. So I ignored it. But I'm, I'm at a point where I got to deal with it. Because I got, I've got no email for at least a week coming in. At least a week coming in. That's a lot of emails. A lot of it's junk, but it's still some stuff in there. I needed some stuff I needed for church. I needed it. <clears throat> I needed it. Let me bring this scripture in. David said, hear my prayer and answer me. Hear my prayer and answer me. Today I'm going to talk to you about the help desk. The help desk. All right. The help desk. And that first passage of scripture, hear my prayer. You know what? 
in this situation, the Lord actually pushed it in my head that I am always able to call him. Even when I think I know what I'm doing, I'm always able to call him. Not only that, I should call him. So let me tell you, let me tell you what happened. So I called, I, I, on, the, on the web page that I went to to try to correct my email problem, it said, do you want to, do you want to open a chat room? So I said, yes. And lo and behold, the Lord taught me a Bible study right there. Right there, while I was going through the chat room. And all I did was type. That's all. See, you can call if you don't know how to deal with a chat room. You can call and get the same result. Just call and somebody, this dude's name was Sid. He said, hey, hello, this is Sid. I mean, he typed, this is Sid. I'll be assisting you today. What's your problem? So I type, can't get my email. <laughs> Very well, sir, I'll note that. This is what he typed. Now, we haven't said a word to each other, but we're having a whole conversation. How many of y'all talk to the Lord? Right. Don't get a word from him. Guess what? He hears you. Look, look, I love this. I love this. That when he was typing, it said at the bottom, agent type, typing. So even when I couldn't read what he said, I knew he was listening and computing an answer for me. He wasn't ignoring me. He heard me. He heard me, and he walked me through, and he said, to better assist you today, Mr. Sparks, after we got all the preliminaries out of the way, he said, and this is what threw me, he said, do you mind if I take control of your computer? <laughs> now, hold on now. That's personal. I was hesitant. He heard me. He said, but to better assist you, if I'm going to do my best job, I don't need for you to be the filter. I just need to get the machine, get you, and straighten it out. Will you let me? Will you authorize me to take control now? Some of us want the Lord to help us, but we don't want to give him ultimate control because I got some personal stuff going on here, Lord. You can't step into my computer. You can't step into my life because I got some stuff I've been hiding. It ain't no Jared stuff or nothing like that. But you know, it ain't nothing like that. But I got some stuff that I just don't put on front street. Not only that, I got my finances. I got our personal business on, on my computer. And I just don't know if I won't see it right. <laughs> looking around in my computer. All right, you heard me. I know you hear me. But I don't know if I want you to help me like that. So guess what? Guess what? I had to be vulnerable. Some of us are afraid to be vulnerable. We're afraid to break down our barriers and our defenses to let the help that really can help us come through. We'd rather keep on pushing it our way. We'd rather keep on messing it up. We'd rather not get our emails. Translation blessing. We'd rather not get our blessing. Look, 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 look. Not only not get our blessing, not be a blessing because not only could I not get email guess what I couldn't I couldn't send no emails either so not only could I not get it nobody else could be blessed by me and so after some contemplation I finally accepted see it as a control of my computer but before I could do it, I'm telling you, this was a Bible study. He said, first, I have to give you the code. And you got to put the code in authorizing me to take control of your computer. And so I said, okay. See, because God gave us a, a code. 
if you want the help desk in heaven to help you, you have to put the code in. And see, everybody that prays don't pray with the code. And their, praise don't, their prayers don't get heard. Because Jesus said, you have to ask it, what's the code? In my name. In my name. If you ask it in my name, then you can get it through. See, John 14 and 14, I'm Bible, says that you may ask me for anything in my name and I will do it. So code, John 14, 14. Code, John 15, 7 says, if you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask what you wish and it will be done for you. That's the code. That's the code. That's the, he heard me. He gave me a code. After I allowed him in my life, I put the code in. And so when you get in trouble, just use the code. Use the code in Jesus' name. It's not just some Baptist folk put at the end of their prayer. It's what the Bible says you have to use in order for heaven to hear her. You have to say, you have to know that your prayers come through our relationship with Jesus Christ. How do I know? Not because I made it up. Jesus said it. Jesus gave the code. So once I did that, I literally sat back and I watched him take control of my computer. You, you, you don't know, it was a surreal moment. The mouse was moving around. It was opening programs. I'm like, uh-uh, uh-uh, don't open that. <laughs> what, what you need to go in there for? Uh, that ain't broke. I got that. <laughs> but, but when he takes control of your system, then he takes control of all of your system. And, and guess what I found out? Let me, let me tell you. So sometimes you got too many programs open. Sometimes your programs are freezing your system and causing it not to work right. Yes. Sometimes there are too many operators on your system. Sometimes too many folk get on there and they leave stuff open. I used to put a, when all the kids, when the kids were at the house, they'll tell you right now, I used to put a, a sticky note on the computer that says, log off. Log off. They used to finish doing what they were doing and leave their stuff up, which means it's just running, just running. But not only that, he also, I realized that maybe I learned some bad habits while I was computing. And some of those bad habits come just from how I was taught. Maybe I was taught wrong, some of us in here. We're not, we not necessarily bad parents, we just taught wrong. Yeah, we weren't taught how to be the best parent. We watched somebody else who wasn't taught how to be a good parent. And, and guess what, we just passed on to another generation. The bad parenting stuff that we were taught is now down to another generation. And I realized that by watching him take controls and, and, and also realized that sometimes it's the programs you install in your life that can mess up your system. Yeah, you can pull something new in thinking you got the hottest, latest, newest thing. But when it comes in, it takes control of stuff and messes up the normal processing that goes on. Now, if you, if you know it, it, it really does. If you ever install a program and you stop to read the fine language, the law says it has to tell you that this program will take control of this, 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 and this. But because we just want the latest program, we just install it. Yeah, some of us have brought folk in our lives that have taken over the whole program. And they're messing up the program. Not only have we put new folk in, guess what? Unfortunately, we've lost some folk. We've lost some folk, part of our program. 
that it was such an integral part of our operating system that when we lost that program, when that program was uninstalled in our lives, it messed up the operation of how we compute. Somebody in here is struggling because that old program, that program that they had gotten so used to has been uninstalled in their lives. And suddenly they don't know what to do anymore. And I can tell you right now, control, alt, delete, don't straighten out everything. <laughs> it does not straighten out everything. I have turned the system completely off and when it came back up, it came up with the same problem that I thought I was getting rid of. That's bad habits we learn. Sometimes in order to get things straight, you have to get the program straight. And so I watched him control my system and he went to an area that I didn't know about. And he went in, and look at this now, he, he went in, he went in, and when he got there, he had to, and I love this, he had to correct my settings. My settings were off. I didn't even know about the settings. <laughs> but he, he, I'm being facetious, I didn't know we had settings, but I didn't know what the correct ones were. If somebody said to me, what about your settings to get your email in? And see, it, it, let me, if I can put it like this, in order for you to get the blessing that God wants you to get, you have to have the right address for him to send it to. And if you don't have the right address for him to send it to, you're not going to get the blessing. And my address had gotten messed up. I don't know how my, maybe I moved. Maybe while computing, I put in the wrong address at some point, or I did something that messed my settings up, but Sid knew how to go in and straighten out my settings. And when he finished straightening out my settings, Denise, I saw him do something that was funny. He sent me a test message from my own machine. He sent me a test message from my machine when he finished straightening out my, set, my settings. And, and look at this, and look at this, and I'm going to get this. And I'm, I'm. He sent me a test message, and the test message came through the machine like it should. And suddenly, here's the, suddenly I got a flood of emails coming through. Not only did I get a flood of emails coming through, I saw in the outgoing box a flood of emails waiting to go out. So not only were my blessings being held up somewhere, my blessings were being held up somewhere, but somebody else was thinking, you know, I sent Andre a, a message, and he hadn't responded yet. He must not care. He, 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 but it wasn't that I didn't care. My settings were messed up. Somebody in here been waiting to hear from you. The Lord's been trying to get through to you and tell you that the, you need to call somebody, but you haven't gotten the message, and they over there thinking, he don't care. But the truth of the matter is life has come along and messed up your settings, and you need the help desk to get your setting straight. And when your settings get straight, guess what? Your blessings can flow through. And when your blessings can flow through to you, the blessing you are to somebody else can flow out to them. So he hears me. Not only does he hear me, I love this. I love this. On the way, he said, you need to make sure you got you a good virus protection plan. You know what the virus protection plan is? It's like the Holy Spirit, right? The Holy Spirit that blocks stuff that's not good from you. Yeah, the Holy Spirit that detects when something looks good. Yeah. Looks like a letter. Somebody's about to give me a million dollars. Only problem is included in the letter is a code that will get inside my software and mess it up and maybe throw my settings off. So trying to get better, I got worse. But the 
Holy Spirit can do that for me. He knows what malware is. So he can block the stuff in my life and tells me this looks like junk. Do you want to put this in your junk mail? A lot of folk got stuff riding in their main email that ought to be junk. Get you a good virus protection plan for your life. His name is the Holy Spirit. He can bless you. He can block you. Not only can he guard your life, he's your protector. See, it says right there, verse 2, guard my life, for I am devoted to you. You are my God. Save your servant who trusts in you. Matthew Henry once said, well armed against the strongest temptation are they who are filled with the Holy Spirit. You got to have the Holy Spirit in you. You got to utilize the services of the health, the help desk. But not only is he my protector, I love the fact, I love the fact that in this, in this psalm, he says, in verse 3, he says, Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I call to you all day long. I can call the help desk all day. And the help desk's job is to come help me every day. Every time I call, there is never a time when I don't get an answer from the help desk. Now, in truth, sometimes I call my computer help desk and I might not get an answer for a couple of days. But that's not the case with the Lord. That's always an answer. Do you know the Lord always responds? He always answers yes, no, or not yet. So the, the yes, no, or yes, but wait. Yes, but wait. Some of y'all been praying for something and the Lord has said yes, but the time is not right yet. You're not mature enough to handle what the Lord wants to put in you. And even though you want it and you think you're ready for it, the Lord knows you're not ready for it. Even though he said yes, you can't handle it right now. So you'll get it. And on the day and at the time that you are ready for it, guess what? Just like my email messages, your blessings will just flow. Because the Lord, the help desk has already said, yes. 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 Some of us right now are realizing a prayer that we prayed 15 years ago. In fact, you prayed it so long ago, you forgot you prayed it. When all of a sudden, it walked into your life. Yeah. Some of them call them wife or husband. Yeah, yeah. No, you went through the carousel of others, but that wasn't the one. You said, Lord, give me one that's the blessing for me. And the Lord said, yes. But guess what? Even though he's the blessing for you, you're not ready for him. And so I want to take you through this, let you go through this. And at the point in time that the two of you are ready, nobody could know that that dude you bumped into in the mall was the one God sent to you 15 years ago. That's how God blesses you. That's how he blesses you. Have mercy on me, for I call you all day long. And the last thing I'm going to tell you, and I'm out of here, verse 4 says that bring joy to your servant. For you, O Lord, to you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. You need to know you need to know. You know, I was happy. When I finally got it repaired, it was a load off. It was a stress off me, Reg, because suddenly I could just get back to my normal routine. The help desk had done what I asked it to do. And I love this, Anthony. The help desk says, Mr. Sparks, if I have been of service to you today, would you please complete this customer service survey. In other words, would you tell somebody else that the help desk has been good to you? And so, how many of us are filling out the customer service survey, letting somebody know how good God at the help desk has been in your life, referring other folk to the help desk? Some of us want to keep the help desk all to ourselves. Guess what? The help desk is able to help everybody. Everybody. The fruit of the Spirit, the second fruit of the Spirit that Paul mentions is joy. 
Do you have joy? Do you have joy? You do if you have the Holy Spirit in you. I'm telling you, you have joy. You might not be watering joy in your life. You might be giving more attention to something else, but you have joy in your life. It's, it's in there. If you want to be joyful, you have to water it. You have to experience joy every day. Every day. Look, stop looking on the negative side of life. Start looking on the positive side of life. Start looking for the silver lining in the clouds. Start looking for the sunny side of the day. Stop always being negative. Because you got joy in you. And guess what? Joy is contagious. If you got joy on Monday, you're going to wake up on Tuesday and want some more joy. And you'll do what you need to do on Wednesday to keep your joy flowing. It doesn't mean you don't have problems in life. Ms. Johnson, we know we have problems in life. If you go back and look at the original design of the golf ball, you'll find that the golf ball was originally D made smooth, like other balls. But a funny thing happened. When the golfers were playing with it, they realized and they quickly developed their favorite balls because the favorite balls, George, were the ones that had nicks and bruises on it. And they found out that the ones that had nicks and bruises on it would travel further than the ones that were smooth. And so they started subjecting golf balls to pressure. The dimples you see on a golf ball represent the pressure they put on it. And that's why they travel so far. Some of us don't want any nicks or bruises in our lives. But I'm here to tell you that it's from the nicks and bruises that you learn how to travel further. I love Jesus. I believe he lived for me. I believe he died for me. I believe that, that God loved him so much that he resurrected him from the dead. And when he left here, before he left here, he said, Andre, I'm, I'm assuming that I was there. I know the disciples were there, but I'm a disciple. And I was sitting there listening to him and he said, he said Andre, I'm going to leave you for a while but I'm gonna leave somebody here to help you. I'm gonna leave you a helper, another comforter, one just like me, the same style as me. I'm gonna leave him for you. And when you need anything, just ask it in my name. And that's why I depend on the help desk. I don't know how to be Karen's husband right. I don't. I've struggled and I've fumbled for 30 some years. And when I need some help, I call the help desk. And the help desk tells me really not how to be a better husband. It really tells me just how to be a better person. And usually that works out for our benefit. I, I probably have screwed up being a father so many times. But when I have had those problems, I just call the help desk. I didn't always call the help desk, and most of the time my biggest mess ups came when I, instead of calling the help desk, I gave myself advice. Get what you pay for, right? I wonder if you have that same problem. I wonder if you're tired of trying to be your own guy. If you have need of someone to help you. I strongly recommend you create a relationship with the help desk. But the only way you can do it is you got to be part of the organization. I hate to be the one to tell you this, but everybody that prays, the prayers aren't heard. You have to be a part of his family in order for the help desk to answer when you call. He'll answer if you're part of the family. You got the code. And so if you're here today and you want to be a part of his family, I extend my hand, the invitation to, and invite you to become a part of his family so he can be your helper. Don't let another day go by and mess it up anymore. Join the family right now. Choir singing, welcoming us. 
Whosoever will, let them come right now. Thank you for letting me tell you my story today. But it can be your story too. Well, there it is. I hope you were blessed by the God's word. It's my prayer that you will grow from this message. But in case you need a refreshment, you can always stop by our physical location and worship with us at 7600 Division Avenue over in the East Lake community. I believe one visit and you'll find out that we truly are the friendliest church from the parking lot to the pulpit. Looking forward to meeting you. God bless you. Take care.